Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name is Stan, and today we're going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, pulling wires in, how to segregate them within the panel, and uh, the reason we ran so many conduits here. Um, you know, people ask that question on the channel quite a bit. Why do you run so many conduits? Just one, one, one giant one, you know, and then just pack all your wires in there. Well, you know what? We don't like to pack them in too tight. We've got a lot of different voltages here. We've got a lot of different things we pulled in. We've got some 110 volt. We've got some DC, low voltage, uh, 20, 24 volt DC. We've got some uh, 480 volt power wiring for motors and inductive type loads. We've got some 110 volt controls um, that, that all need to be segregated. And what we're gonna do is uh, go through and, and land everything we know. You know, uh, anything that's already color coded, you know, like all my greens, those are all ground. So those all need to get segregated, put into a loom, and brought over. All my 480 volt needs to get separated from my 110. And we've got them separated in the, in the pipes, you know, going out to all the different uh, components. But why wouldn't we uh, try to segregate them within the panel too and give them all their own loom and uh, try to separate those as much as possible. Um, we want to keep our 480 volts away from our you know, our low voltage stuff, so we don't induce any voltage. There's a phenomenon known as induced voltage. When the wires are bundled together, they can actually induce voltage into the other side. And if you've got a high volt and a low volt, maybe a 24 volt DC, you can induce voltage and uh, start to cause errors with some of these electronics and things involved. Uh, this is a, uh, a four bank of uh, BFDs that are all on a network. Below it is a PLC, which is a programmable logic controller. So we've got uh, you know, we've got Cat5 cable in here, which is shielded fairly nicely. It's the nice uh, Cat5, and uh, but we still don't want to uh, crowd it with any uh, frequencies coming out of the drives. Uh, they could really induce some bad uh, uh, frequencies and induce voltage into some of the low volt stuff. So let's uh, kind of segregate some of this, and I'll bring it back for that here in a few uh, minutes. When we get, uh, we're going to begin separating and, and try to make uh, heads or tails of this mess. All right, I'll uh, see you in a little bit. Okay, welcome back. I've done a little bit of preliminary segregation. Uh, we've got all our 480 volt cable in here. That's brown, orange, yellow, also known as boy. But uh, there's all our power wiring, so that's all our 480 volt motors and everything that we're going out to. The one's labeled at the end. So we've got that to the side. We've got a thermostat cable here. And that's to the side, and that's going to get tucked in the back. We've got all our 110 and low volt stuff here. And up on top, we've brought all our grounds together. So we've got all our greens right here put together. So we've already done some preliminary segregation and it's it's already looking better, right? So, uh, you know, you just work on each bundle at a time and try to keep them as separated as you can within the panel. We separated them the pipes. There's no reason we shouldn't separate them within the panel too. So we're gonna start off with the uh, thermostat cable. This is just a really thin two conductor uh, thermostat cabling. And these are going out to the uh, thermocouples, which are temperature sensors uh, in three different places on the unit. <clears throat> and we need to get those down to the PLC. There's a module here on the end. Uh, it's a thermocouple module. So we need to get these uh, thermocouple inputs into the, into the uh, module. So we're going to be putting these on um, CATA mounts, which are the uh, self-adhesive uh, sticky mounts. We got a bag of them here. These are just a peel and stick. They got a sticky back with foam tape, double stick tape. And you just put that in there and run a tie wrap through it. And stick it in the panel and run your wires through that. And that keeps your wires uh, tucked away and out of trouble. So we're going to get our uh, thermostat wires in first, way in deep. And we're going to start working on the power wiring. And those are going to go to all these BFDs right here. All right, so uh, let's get those done and we'll come back and talk a little more. Okay, we're back and we just, all we did was, uh, we got the power wiring out of the way. I did the thermostat wiring and I'm gonna show you in here. i try to get you in there and show you that thermostat wiring. And I'll hit my headlight here. Okay, so our thermocouple is done. We've got the covers off on one and two. Uh, north and south, uh, thermocouple wiring is done. Uh, the booth wiring is done. These, these stay deep in the panel. They stay all the way to the back. Uh, the 480 wiring is going to be coming out uh, on the side of this VFD and it goes to these quick terminals here on the bottom. All right, and that's uh, coming up next. 
Okay, so we're kind of working our way along here. We got the first two landed, and we're going to be connecting uh, the third and fourth here. And these <clears throat> these VFDs, like I showed you before, have this little quick plug. Kind of nice. There's just a little terminal block, and after you got your wires uh, cut, stripped, and labeled, um, just drop them in and go. So these are going in uh, B O Y. Always remember B O Y, brown, orange, yellow. So B O Y right there on your terminal block. Uh, drop them in. They're already at the right distance for wire insertion. So that means when they get shipped, the screws are already backed out. You just drop your wires in and go. And they got kind of a universal screw in there. There's a it'll take a posi driver or a uh, flat posi driver. is very different from a regular Phillips. That's kind of the European way of doing things, and these are German-made drives. All right, so we're tight there. Got our brown, orange, yellow on our plug, and at this point, we just snap it into the VFD. I'm going to get my fat sausage fingers in there. There we go. And that just drops in like that and goes in with a click. And we're ready to tie wrap that thing up and keep our wire loom going. We're going to tie wrap it at every break point until we work our way to the last one. Let me just get to there. Panduit gun on there and uh, tighten it up. That's it. And like I said, we got one one last one to do there at the back. I'll bring you back and show you what all the power wiring looks like. Okay, so that's the first part of it. It's uh, <clears throat> done with. You notice our power wiring is out of the way. Our thermostat cable is out of the way. I'll bring you in a little closer and show you the whole thing. Over here. <clears throat> Uh, all the power wires bundled up neatly and we've got a couple of catamounts right next stuck to this VFD it just keeps them out of the way we need to stay out of the way of the, the main breaker we got the main feed coming in so I want to give the boys bringing the main power to us plenty of room to uh, uh, land into the top of that breaker right there uh, so we bring the 480 down and we've cascaded it across uh, we got four different VFDs we go to one two three and four and we just kind of floated the cable across and it's it's secured nicely it's uh it's going to stay there no problems uh, we did have uh, another location to go to so it came down here and we hit these two uh um these are uh, like a manual motor starter they'll actually they actually have a trip rating so it's like kind of like an adjustable breaker so those are for some roll-up doors <clears throat> electric roll-up doors so those had to go out so those are all in the 480 bundle but that part's done, you know, and uh, set you guys back up over here. There we go. So now we got the uh, the 110 to deal with up here. So let's uh, get that started. Get this light out of your face, and uh, <laughs> we'll get that 110 down. And we're gonna probably take it over on this side over here and keep it as far away from the 480 as we can. So the 480 kind of breaks left, and the 110 breaks right. And all our low voltage cable is going to go kind of the other direction. All right, so let's work on that bundle next. Okay, we're well, real quick before I before I deal with the 110 volt stuff. I uh, just made a real quick limb of greens. Those all uh, come together. They're going to tuck way in the back, back here. They're going to get back there. It's probably too dark for you to see it, but they're going to go down this side. And I got a ground bar uh, right back here. So there's a ground bar there that those all have to hit. So I was just going to go ahead and get uh, all my greenies out of the way. So that's uh, that'll be another bundle uh, bites of dust, you know. So we just keep chipping away at it. It's uh, you're just chiseling away at a stone, but you get there eventually. So let's uh, let's get the grounds done, and then we'll deal with that 110. Okay, so now you guys know why I uh, wear the headlight. So I can get in these dark panels, see what I'm doing. And 
The lighting in here is not great. I mean, we've got natural light, just skylights. So uh, let's take a look at the grounding. Uh, that's all completed, so that's another bundle out of our way. Let's, uh, once you get in there, let's take a peek at that. I'll even turn on my headlight here as a backlight. <clears throat> you see the grounding there in the back. It comes down the back side of the panel in that green loom. And then we hit our uh, hit our ground bar down here. So that's where we uh, hit. And we got another, what, six, eight, ten wires out of our way. So pretty good. Uh, last up is uh, this bundle here. These are our last set of wires. And uh, we can get those in. Oh, I got the transformer. I got a little control transformer that I got to, it's coming up out of the bottom, so I need to get that wired in. And we need to get this control uh, loom first. Uh, we need to get, get it to its destination. And then uh, in our bundles, all I know is two things. These are, these are bundles for the heaters. One's south and one's north. That's all I know, but there's a bunch of red wires and we still have to ring those. And when you ring wire, you, you have a man at the other end uh, grounding one end of the wire, and I'm at this end with a multimeter uh, checking each individual wire, see which one's grounded. And we call out a, a wire number and we tag at both ends. So it's a two-man job to uh, ring wire. Uh, quite often it's just easier to uh, pull in what do we got here? Two, four, six, seven. We got seven wires, so it's not a big deal to ring them out. Uh, I've run circuits up to 100 before, so uh, it's not a big deal. It just uh, takes a little time. All right, uh, so let's get this uh, let's get this loomed over where where it goes, where it belongs. Get it in the at least in the same zip code, and then we'll work on ringing them out and getting them landed. Okay, well we've got uh, the, the low voltage cable all loomed in. I'll show you what we did there. It's up above those VFDs. Right here, all the way along. Over on this side over here, got it, all, uh, got it on a couple of catamounts, tie wrap bases, all the way down to here. And then we, came, we split it off because we already know where some of these go. You know, remember we labeled some of them here at the end. So those are, these are all going to land uh, here in this pin rail. All I got to do is make these connections because I already know where the homes for all those are. Uh, these are the ones we need to ring. Uh, these two here. And they're all going to terminate on those pin rails and these breakers underneath, uh, underneath there. So we're at the home stretch. You know, we just got to get some, a little more termination done. Uh, ring wire. And this panel is going to be at a close. So, uh, and that's uh, kind of your overview of the whole thing. Let me get these. Uh, let me get these landed, and then we'll uh, we'll bring it back just for one final, and talk maybe a little more about why we're doing all this. Uh, we're not doing it to be OCD. We're not doing it because it looks cool. We're doing it for pure segregation purposes to separate our voltages within the panel. Uh, we did it in the pipes for a reason, just for pure separation and we're going to separate it inside the cabinet as much as possible too. All right, so let me finish up these terminations and we'll bring you back one last time. Okay, so this thing's at a close. I'm going to grab the camera and show you around inside of here. Uh, we've got all the wires landed. We've done all the, the wire ring and that's, uh, and that's what you do with the fluke. Uh, you set it on continuity, ground, it, ground one of your terminals here. Then you just grab a loom of cables, and with the other guy at the other end of the loom, he grounds one wire only. And then you just go through the loom and find it. You get communication with the other gentleman uh, doing the work with you, but uh, it goes quick and easy. If it's up on the roof or something like that, we use uh, radios. So it, it's very simple to do. And uh, let's show you around the we'll show you around the cabinet here real quick. You've already seen. Uh, the loom across the top. Let me get a headlight on here. Right here. And we've landed our terminals uh, across here. Here, here. Some of the circuit breakers. Uh, the rest of the loom came down. We swept up and got in uh, uh, some of our 4 to 20 milliamp signals. And we hit all our breakers and all our terminal strips for our heaters. 
Uh, here's a good habit to get into. Uh, go ahead and run your technician some spares. That's going to air makeup number two. You've got two spare uh, wires going over there. And there's air makeup unit number one. A couple spare wires for him there. Uh, quite often all you need is two wires to... Uh, quite often all you need is two wires to ring a bell, set a reset, light up a light, whatever. Quite often two wires is very useful. So I like my uh, startup technicians, so I run them spare wires voluntarily. It's not off of uh, any plans or anything. I just run spare wires and uh, they appreciate that. So uh, that's a good habit to get into, but this panel's at a close and uh, there's questions on the channel. How do I make my panels look so neat? Well, it's, it's not really a matter of neat and it's not a matter of being OCD. I'm not OCD at all. If someone spent a gob of time making this picture perfect, I would probably fire them. Uh, it's about segregating your voltages, creating a separation within the panel that matches, you know, because you spend all that time doing it with your pipes, why not do it in the cabinet too? Uh, and that's why we separate and that's why we make looms. Uh, if someone goes just completely crazy inside of a panel, they just wasted far too much time. Uh, putting that thing together. You just you need to be able to put a panel together quickly make some money and not get completely OCD with it. All right uh, Thanks for watching you guys. Hope you enjoyed this uh, Segment on how to segregate wires uh, within a control cabinet See ya